Adventures, expectations and explorations are always exciting, especially when they are real and if it is the first of its kind, it is even more thrilling. The only question that comes to one's mind is, what makes one to take up such tasks that involves high risks? It is the spirit of formidable adventure and certain qualities which make them achieve such feats. Adventure is an unusual experience arising out of exciting activities. Undoubtedly, it must be audacious, daring, venturesome, emboldened, nervy, temerarious, and certain risky and exploratory adventure is a way to discover ourselves there are many adventure sports like river rafting deep sea diving bungee diving sky diving wildlife safaris paragliding trekking, mountain biking, sports fishing and river surfing. The list goes on. When we talk about adventure, many names in history flash in front of our eyes that become famous for great heroism and dedication to a great cause. One such name who in many ways personifies the spirit of adventure is none other than Sir Edmund Hillary, an enthusiastic explorer of New Zealand who not only inspired his nation but also adorned the currency of his nation. Sir Edmund Hillary was born in New Zealand on 20th July 1919. He had a sister June born in 1917 and a brother Rex born in 1920. He was a mountaineer, explorer and philanthropist. He became interested in climbing when he was 16 following a 1935 school trip to Mount Rupharis. He served in the Royal New Zealand Air Force as a navigator during World War II. Hillary married Louise Mary Rose on 3rd September 1953 soon after the ascent of Everest. They had a girl baby named Belinda. Both Louise Mary Rose and Belinda died in a plane crash on 31st March 1975. After 15 years, in 1989, he married June Mulgrew, the widow of his close friend Peter Mulgrew. And they had two children named Peter and Sarah. Hillary devoted himself to assisting the Sherpa people of Nepal through the Himalayan Trust, which he established. Hillary's efforts are credited with the construction of many schools and hospitals in Nepal. High adventure, no latitude for error, nothing venture, nothing win. View from the summit, the remarkable member by the first person to conquer Everest are some of his famous works. Hillary and Sherpa mountaineer Tenzing Norgay became the first climbers confirmed to have reached the summit of Mount Everest. Tenzing in his 1955 autobiography wrote that Hillary took the first step onto the summit and he followed. They spent about 15 minutes at the summit. Hillary took a photo of Tenzing posing with his ice axe but there is no photo of Hillary. BBC News attributed this to Tenzing's having never used a camera. Tenzing's autobiography says that Hillary simply declined to have his picture taken. Edmund Hillary passed away at the age of 88 on 11th January 2008 in New Zealand. Hillary is definitely the greatest New Zealander of modern times. His legacy to the people of Nepal and his contribution to the region will never be forgotten. He was a giant. He was incredibly good at altitude. There is no doubt about that. Now it's time to move on to the lesson, the summit, a travelogue, an amazing account of the conquest of Mount Everest by Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, who were the first to climb Mount Everest, the world's highest mountain.
On May 28th, there were six men at camps on the South Coast. Edmund Hillary, Tenzing Norgay, George Lowe, Alfred Gregory and the two Sherpas, Pemba and Agnuma. Here Sherpa means members of a Himalayan people lived on the borders of Nepal and Tibet who are famous for skill in mountaineering. But Pemba was too ill to climb so that the others heavily laden climbed that day to a height of 27,900 feet. Here Hillary and Tenzing put up a little tent and watched their companions go down the ridge back towards the south coast. At the sunset, Hillary and Tenzing crawled into the tent, put on all their warm clothing and wriggled into their sleeping bags. Next morning, at 4 a.m. on May 29th, they began to get ready for the climb. They started up their cooker and drank large quantities of lemon juice and sugar, followed with the last tin of sandin on biscuits. Here sandin means a dish of small and immature fish. They dragged their oxygen set into the tent, cleaned the ice off them and then rechecked and tested them. As Hillary's shoes were wet, he warmed them up and managed to soften them. They wore their windproof over their down clothing. They pulled three pairs of gloves, silk, woolen and windproof onto their hands. At 6.30 a.m., they crawled out of the tent into the snow hoisted their 30 lb of oxygen gear onto their backs connected up their masks and turned on the valves to bring life giving oxygen into their lungs after taking good deep breaths they were ready to set off to the summit tenzing stepped in a long traverse back towards the ridge he had traverse in the sense travel across they reached its crest crest means highest point from where it formed a great snow pump at about 28000 feet from there it narrowed to a knife edge as tenzin's feet were warm hillary took over the lead the soft snow made a route on the top of the ridge both difficult and dangerous it often gave way suddenly after several hundred feet they found two oxygen bottles in a tiny hollow Those oxygen bottles were left on the earlier attempt by Evans and Bridelin. I hope you know who they are. Evans and Bridelin were the first assault party and made the first ascent of the South Summit. The summit of Everest was reached by their teammates Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay in the second assault party 3 days later on 29th 1953. They found that they contained still several liters of oxygen enough to get them down to the south coal if used sparingly. Edmund Hillary made a trial up on the ridge to lead up to the southern summit. Though snow was dangerous, they continued in their efforts to beat a trial up it. They made frequent changes of lead. When Hillary stamped a trial, it gave way and he slipped back. So he discussed with Tenzing the advisability of going on. Tenzing worried about the snow conditions but finished with his familiar phrase just as you wish. The determined Hillary decided to go on. Finally they reached firmer snow higher up. Then they chipped steps up the last steep slopes and crampon on to the south peak at 9 a.m. Chip means making small cuts. A crampon means a metal frame with sharp points that is attached to the bottom of a boot to make walking on ice or snow easier they made small steps on the slopes and managed to move on with the help of crampons they cut a seat for themselves just below the south summit and removed their oxygen apparatus as their first partly full bottle of oxygen was now exhausted they had only one full bottle left Their apparatus was now much lighter, weighing just over 20 lb. As Hillary cut steps down off the south summit, he felt a sense of freedom and well-being. The snow was crystalline and firm. Two or three blows of the ice axe produced a step large enough even for their oversized high-altitude boots. Then they started moving one at a time. As Tenzing was belaying, belaying means securing. saving hillary would go on cutting 
If you observe this picture carefully, you can find steps like cutting on the snow. In this way, Hillary made a 40 foot lines of steps. In number of places, they had to face the overhanging ice cornices and they were very large too. An overhanging cornices means an excess of mass of wind-blown snow or ice usually on the ridge which cannot be disposed of easily. Here in this picture you can find a roof like layer of ice isn't it that is called overhanging cornices. They had to escape the large overhanging cornices so they just cut a line of steps down to where the snow met the rocks on the west. They were thrilled to look straight down this enormous rock face and to see 8000 feet below them the tiny tents of Camp 4 in the Western Khun. On its east side there was another great cornish. Hillary could see a narrow crack between the cornish and the rock. Leaving Tenzing to belay him as best he could, Hillary jammed his way into this crack. Then kicking backwards, Hillary sank the spikes of his crampons deep into the frozen snow behind him and lifted himself off the ground. We already learned the meaning of crampons, isn't it? Crampons means shoes with nails. Taking advantage of every little rock hold and all the force of knee, shoulder and arms Hillary could work hard, he literally cramponed backwards up the crack, praying that the carnage would remain attached to the rock. Their progress was slow but steady. As Tenzing paid out the rope, he inched his way upwards until he reached the top. For a few minutes, he laid regained his breath. He took a firm position and signaled Tenzing to come on up. Tenzing wriggled his way up the crack and finally collapsed at the top like a giant fish. The ridge continued as before. Giant cornishes on the right, steep rock sloped on the left. The ridge curved away to the right and they had no idea where the top was. The time was passing and the ridge seemed never ending. Their original excitement had now quite gone and it was turning more into a grim struggle. Then Hillary realized that the ridge ahead instead of raising now dropped sharply away. Hillary looked upwards to see a narrow snow ridge running up to a snowy summit. A few more hits and backs of the ice axe in the firm snow and they stood on the top. Edmund Hillary and Tenzing were relieved after they were nearing the summit. There were no more steps to cut, no more ridges to traverse and no more humps to tantalize them with hopes of success. Hillary looked at Tenzing. In spite of helmet, gaggles and oxygen mask that concealed his face, there was no sign of hiding his joy as he looked all around him. Here gaggle means protective glasses which can be worn while climbing the mountain. They both shook hands, threw each one's arms around their shoulders and thumped each other on their backs until they were almost breathless. It was 11.30 am when they reached the top of the summit. To the east, they found a giant peak, Makhalu, which is unexplored and unclimbed. Unexplored means no one went into for the purpose of discovery. You might have heard about Makhalu. Makhalu is the fifth highest mountain in the world at 8,485 meters. It is located in the Himalayas, 19 km southeast of Mount Everest on the border between Nepal and Tibet. It's an isolated peak whose shape is a four-sided pyramid. Far away across the clouds, they found the great bulk of Kanchanjunga loomed on the horizon. Here loomed means appeared. I hope you know the meaning of horizon. It is the line where the earth seems to meet the sky, the apparent junction of the earth and sky. To the west, they could see the great unexplored ranges of Nepal stretching off into the distance. Here stretching means extending. Hillary felt the most important photograph was a shot down the North Ridge showing the North Coal and the old route which had been made famous by the struggles of those great climbers of the 1920s and 1930s. 
as hillary realized himself clumsy figured and slow moving he quickly replaced his oxygen set meanwhile the excited tenzing had made little hole in the snow and in it he placed various small articles of food a bar of chocolate a packet of biscuits and a handful of lollies small offerings indeed but at least a token gift to the gods that all devout buddhists believe have their home on their lofty summit here lofty means high lofty summit means high top hillary made a hole in the snow and placed the crucifix given by colonel hunt two days ago beside stenzing's gifts crucifix means a representation of christ on the cross after 15 minutes around 11:45 Hillary moved down off the summit onto the steps without wasting time before they ran short of oxygen. Finally up the steps and back on South Peak. In spite of being tired, they moved down to the two reserve cylinders on the ridge. As they were only a short distance from camp and had a few liters of oxygen left in their own bottles, they carried the extra cylinders down and reached their tent on its crazy platform at 2 p.m. With a last look at the camp that had served them so well, they turned downwards with dragging feet and set themselves to the task of safely descending the ridge to the south pole. The time passed as in a dream. Two figures came towards them and met them 200 feet above the camp. They were none other than George Love and Wilfred Noyes, laden with hot soup and emergency oxygen. Back to the tent, they crawled into it and with a shy of delight, collapsed into their sleeping bags while the tents flapped and shook under the perpetual south cold gale, proclaiming the victory of Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay.